Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah from the Automator. Today, Isaiah, he's uh, he had a rough week, so we're working Sunday. So yeah. I said, why don't you join me making this video on what we've, because it's mostly him and Irfan doing the work, right? I yeah. kind of sit in the background and bark orders. No, I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> no. the first thing I was doing, I'm like, hey, let's make this video. And then I realized I come in here and I look for auto hockey files, look in the B drive, and then... I restrict the date to in the last like six days. And I'm like, that's, well, this is stupid. A lot of, yeah, there's a lot of things that you have yeah, to do. Just right. to get it takes there. me, what, 20, 30 seconds every time. Why don't we write a simple script? So just before recording this video, we made that script. So let's demonstrate. Um, we're going to launch it here. Now it's going to take a second because on my B drive, it's a really big directory with it's my drop full Dropbox with everything. Um, and it goes across here and updates it. And we're going to see it found 41 files. And um, I'm not actually, that's like a temp file. I don't know what that is. It is a temp but, file, um, yes. Yeah, it's organized just like the other one was. We have it sorted by the folders. So it makes it easy for me to know like on a given topic, which is how I wanted them. Um, this Facebook Geo, that, that's the one for our client. Now, interesting enough, when we were working on that one, um, is a Snurf fan, we're like, hey, what is this other window? Where did the one we were working with that we're, we're, reverse engineering the api calls that are being done behind the scenes so we can do activities and we notice a new thing actually is i don't know if you had heard Irfan told me this later it was only after he dropped the pins that that new window showed up so it's not from the get-go it's after you drop pins and so maybe we don't have as big a concern as we thought right because, oh okay i understand yeah. so 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 if he well well i will see but if he goes to the page it is not there after right. he drops a pin, then yes. he gets that new yes. version that they're testing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so maybe we're, but we, I told the client, I told Irfan, stop work. We need to record a video because this is something like there was uncertainty. And unfortunately for our client, he's the one that has to accept that risk of like, well, maybe things are changing. Does he want us to continue working on it or should we hold off for a week or two? Cause he's, there's no fire on this thing. Um, should we hold off and just see if Facebook makes some changes because it'll change everything we do and we don't want to be burning his time, right? So we kind of stopped on that one. Um, this parsing the page, this is actually the same thing. This is what Irfan was working through and it was really complicated what Irfan was was doing. Um, I Facebook, remember yeah. I remember when you started, like we, we stopped because I told you it is complicated, right? Like it's a lot of work, right? Then right. we said, okay, so as you're working with Jeff, why don't we get Irfan to work on this project? He has been working at this for what, two weeks? Oh, or yeah, more? on and off, but yeah, for right. for, a long for about two weeks, and then and then we, then they realized how really complicated yeah. I meant it was. It was right. not an easy task. Even right. in the end, we did find and and I told Irfan when we talked about this, the problem is not the code because in the end we found a very simple code to do what we were looking for. The problem was understanding what the heck was going on. You spend more time trying to understand what is going on than really doing building the tools. So um, <laughs> Irfan was almost crying like, holy crap, this is so difficult. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I told Joe about that a while, a lot, a while ago. <laughs> so it yeah. is, uh, but it was a very good learning experience for him. He really liked it. He said like, wow, I really liked um, learning about that topic in particular about APIs and how the browser works and so on. Yeah, that you know the other thing I thought about doing was when we're looping over these. Now it would really slow it down, but is to get the number of lines in each file because as mm -hmm. compared to the kilobyte size of the file, that's a better indicator for us of like how much work how was much going work on there. Did, yes. right? But um, yeah, those are all related to that Facebook stuff, and you can see like those those when you're writing text files, like that's that's a fair amount of code there. Irfan did a little bit more discovery to stuff around the Win API, um, that new 19th approach for automating tools with AutoHotkey. So he was, and actually, Zayz, I don't know if we talked to you about this, but it, with Irfan, we were discussing it of like, hey, the Win app inspector, um, that API approach for you know the the new one with the period that he's doing, we realized. It only is, it's using the gut of UIA and ACC. So mm -hmm. should we really create a new discovery tool because we're still finding the same stuff we need, 
right? That's what I meant at the beginning. Yes. Yeah. So why don't we just use Descalada's discovery tool? Yeah, we already borrow have borrow from it. Now we're gonna, you know, we're gonna need to adjust the macro creator to make it easier to write the code for, right? Because that'll and, be different. And probably the IDs, the way how the Win app is is actually generating some IDs, I think is a little I bit. Oh no! See, I thought yeah. when Irfan was saying it that they lined up. So we'll we'll have to go. But I I do totally agree. Like we don't need to reinvent the wheel on the discovery side. Um you know, with what's shown. So so that's probably good. It's great because it'll streamline that whole process. Um, I was just playing with V2 with with the version two of Studio. Um, by the way, it 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 is, for, you can download it, but it's been crashing on me, you know, every like hour or so. It's, it's fairly regular, but it's not crazy regular, but just save your work if you're trying it. Um, mm -hmm. But it does handle V2 code, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, the open AI... I don't even remember. What were we doing with that? Opening it. Well, no, I just opened it a few minutes ago to verify okay. if it was working or not, but that one doesn't count. We didn't really well, work on it. But it's it's on our radar. So this week I, I watched a video and I created um, a discovery tool for the automator, uh, a, a, a chat bot for the automator. And I was like, hey, this is really awesome. We'll put on the automator. And it turns out the when you build a GPT, this is the new... OpenAI released two new things um, la a couple weeks ago, right? One is a GPT, not ChatGPT, just a GPT. That is a tool that you can create your own kind of instances of ChatGPT and give them directions, some civics. And, and they said, like, you can share it with the public. Well, you can share it with the public who are ChatGPT hey. plus, yeah, users, <laughs> Right. right and the even then, I didn't tell you this is a is because I don't really care um, with what I created. But Ray was like, hey, you realize because he went to it because he's a, a plus member and he goes, hey, I can see the files that you uploaded to the actual files. So, oh, wow. That's like, yeah, I don't uh, th you know, I, I should have been, you know, thank you, Ray, for, for letting me know. I don't really it's nothing privileged. Right. Like it's right. all. No, dumb. but it's good to know that in some it, cases. It you, yeah. Because that's okay. clearly not what I want for our general customers. It, it's not that I don't mind them having access. It's that I don't want to confuse them. I want something yeah. very streamlined. So I said, hey, clearly we can use. I know there's a way to use ChatGPT to create chat bots for your website. So let's figure it out. Well, I stumbled on some other videos. I actually was, I was looking, as you're going to laugh. I happen to be in the app on my phone with okay. you for YouTube. And I'm a YouTube premium payer, right? Because I watch yeah. a lot. And I said, oh, click here to see how much time you've spent this week. And so I looked and it was like over 20 hours. I had watched videos this week on YouTube. Like uh, I tell you, like every morning. I usually yeah, you, you, you go ahead and take it. Yeah. Wow. Morning, and then in the evening. Yeah. I watch yeah. a lot of videos. Anyway, I watched a really good video, uh, a couple from this guy. I'll try to remember to um, later on. I'll link to him, but he showed how you use the assistance API from OpenAI to create a chatbot or whatever you like you want on your website, and that way it's on your hosted on your website. Anyone can access it and whatever. We can feed it files. So right now, my plan, I have a couple sources. We're gonna take the list of the two hundred plus downloads we have for AutoHotKey from our website with the URLs and descriptions. We're gonna loop over our roughly 1500 YouTube videos, getting the titles and links to the videos and what the subtitles and stuff do. We're gonna scrape the auto hotkey help file, um, getting the both the examples and hopefully some of the other stuff information. And what was the other, was there one more? I thought there was one more, but we're gonna shove all this into yeah. files and then yeah. upload and then that. Upload them. Yeah. for for a chat bot on our website. So on the automator, we'll have an interface where people can ask questions about AutoHotKey, about our services, about our courses, which ones are the best, you know, about like the hero group as well to help explain to people, these are great resources, right? And have it as a place to, that people can really go to really help them um, learn AutoHotKey. Yep. So yeah, so we're, that's on the roadmap for next week. Um, this media player too, I forget what change we made, but one of them was, and let's see if I can, is it um, control shift? Yeah, it, yeah. I can increase and decrease the volume now by scrolling. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was your suggestion, Isaiah. Yeah. Uh, and I still have the hotkeys for increasing, decreasing it. It just depends where my hands are. If my hands are on the keyboard, I use yeah, the, use the other keyboard. one. Yeah, Otherwise, I'll do it that way. Yeah. But um, yeah, that that's that's a really I'm really enjoying it because 
I can be listening to music or whatever while we're on a Zoom call and you guys can't hear it. Not that I care that you do, right? But it's just nice because it allows you flexibility of of increasing and decreasing it um, without changing your full audio, which is really nice. Exactly. So the this search and replace, I actually asked Irfan because I realized, let me show you, when, when I go in, when I'm creating the newsletter and I go to my channel and I go through it, I'm like, okay, well, what am I going to link to this week? And I'll say, hey, let's link to this video. If I copy here, if I copy that link, that is, that's the studio editing link, not the viewing link. So mm. the look on your face tells so, so you, yeah. like, it's really easy to get the viewing link. I have to click here and get shareable link. Uh-huh. Yeah. 90% of the time I remember, but sometimes I grab this link. Yeah. Well, we have a tool where I use a website. I write the newsletter in Word, and then I paste it into this website. I paste the Word document here, and it converts it to HTML. Well, because we have blocks of sections that we do repeatedly in, a, in like a format and our, our banners and stuff, I would have to have manually done that every time. But what I do is I read this. I have a structured like template. And when I do a search replace here, and I say, hey, replace this code word with our banner. Replace this with the headers and whatever, right? And pictures. And what I told Irfan was, hey, loop over all, grab, look at anything that says YouTube with the edit, whatever, and replace that link with the right link, right? So now I have a check here where I don't have to go yeah. and agree that like I've, I've done that stupid thing. Um, so that's what we were looking at. I was also, because unfortunately the color if I bring in something here and it's like I've in Word, I've colored the font red. It it's the only thing that doesn't come through, like the bold, the size and stuff that comes through, but the coloring doesn't. And we kind of thought up a way that we can get that as well. Um, but I said baby steps, but we'll get back to that next next week. All right. Now prompt assistant. What were you gonna yeah, say? I was just gonna say, well, we had a little bit of a thing. So the new version of prompt assistant. It has a big change on the database. So the database from the old version and the database from the new version are different. So we might we are expecting some issues to come with this one if you upgrade. So uh, if you have bought um, Prompt Assistant and you are upgrading from the old one to the new one, we sent a message to the Hero Group members to contact us because we will help you change the database to the new one and make the transition because we are expecting some differences there. And instead of building a tool that will do that automatically and spending too much time on that, we decided to go ahead and um, release the new version because it has a very it has a, a lot of good um, improvements, especially on the size of the database and the speed it takes to load the icons because we had troubles with that before. Uh, so we decided, hey, let's go ahead and release because it is better to have those features out first, but if you have the old version, we are expecting some issues. So just contact us. We're going to go ahead and um, update the database for you. And uh, the new version of Prompt Assistant is using a type of licensing because it is a, a paid tool. And we usually don't have those licensing uh, features on sure. on other scripts because they are actually basically free. Right. But this one, we have spent a lot of time on this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> how how long have you been trying this, right? Yeah. It's it's a watch this video if you haven't seen the, its functionality. And I mentioned to Zayas this morning, I'm like, hey, in the, the old, and I forget, was it part of the spell check? I don't remember. The Windows H where you'd select yes. text. Yes. Hit Windows H and it would pre-build your hot string, right? And I'm like, why don't we have it where we select text, hit a hotkey, and it'll open prompt assistant, adding it to you know the option like i was adding a new one so here if i bring up prompt assistant oh no i don't have a license yeah great i can't use it <laughs> uh, you do have a license uh, but yeah. I, I, can, I can pass you one but um yeah, sorry yeah. um but in the edit field it'll pre-populate that and then you just add your trigger right and add an icon if you want or a hotkey if you want right but um that's what i was like hey that you know that'll be easy and it doesn't change the complexity of the tool at all. It just adds a simple way to do some new stuff. So that's there. Okay. Um, th this is part of that update, right? You and you and Hellbent, thankfully Hellbent came in a couple times and helped us work through some of the complex thing of, did did you explain the, the resizing of the images of like what we were actually doing to free up space? 
Yes. So there's two parts to that. One of them is when we grab a file, we read the image and use GDI to resize it and shrink it to a size that is better size-wise. Um, and after we resize it, then we save it on the database. That's why we are saying, hey, there's a big improvement there because um, the way how we resized it, it makes sure that if you select a two megabyte icon, we don't save the two megabyte into the database, right? So we make sure that all of the icons are of the same size. We do that, perfect. But here's the interesting part. On the database, we're not saving the actual file. We're saving uh, base64 representation of the file. So we're converting the binary into a base64 encoded string, and that's what we're saving. The problem is, if you have run the previous version, all the icons that you had in their actual size are saved on the database as base64 with the full size. So if you picked a two megabyte icon, it is saved on the database as a two megabyte base64 string. So we had to go out. The second part of the work I did with um, Hellbent is that now I can grab a base64 string and from there decode the image, resize it, re-encode it, and then put it in the database. So that one is a is a higher step, you know, is 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 a from one, you take a file, directly resize it before saving as a B64 string. But in the other part, yeah, I just have a B64 string. Yeah, we have to decode the image, resize it, re-encode it, and then save it again. So it was a very tricky subject there. Yeah. And and by the way, we recorded those calls, or at least a couple of them. And if I, I didn't release it on the channel because they're, they're very niche. But if you happen to be interested in working with the GDI library and um and database or base64 encoding and the handles and bitmaps and all this crap that I really couldn't care less about myself. Um <laughs> let me know. I'll give you the link, right, to watch the videos. But I, I figured most people I, I don't want to burn the channel because I'm like, most people it's just not going to be relevant. Right. The, you mentioned earlier, you know, we added our script object, which it it you know has a little bit about the licensing, but also checking for licensing. And that was someone wrote me last week and they're like, hey, how can I lock down my auto hockey script so people can't just install it overly, you know, over and over? And I'm like, that's a really complicated topic to talk through because there's a lot of different approaches with different, you know, levels of do you want to have it one license per computer? Do you care if, you know, do they always have the license? Do you have a check every time it runs? I mean, there's a lot of things that come into play. This is this is why I'd say, like, if you're doing something like that, come to us and we can help you talk through them um, and then decide an approach, especially if you want it to where, it actively checks every time that you have, if you have a subscription service, right? Like that's where you want it to be checking every time. Are they still valid, right? That just adds a whole nother level of complexity to yeah. it. And yeah. as you just tried, for example, you tried the, the prompt assistant right away complained, hey, you don't have a license key and whatever. Right. Right. That, that, that is something that it is a common thing that we would do in a few different programs. For example, then I needed to have a way to just write it once and then just include it on the others if I needed to. Uh, I didn't want to write that whole function over and over again, you know, <laughs> that would be annoying. Yeah, this um, this is the one we just were using right now. This is the script that we just wrote. Um, what would you say? Was that like maybe 20 minute video I think we did to, to create this tool? Yeah, it was It was about that. Yeah, it, it was a very good um, overview and and, and it, is, it, it shows a lot of very valuable tricks yep. that you can use. And, and and I think you mentioned that in the video as well. Most of those tricks, we show them in, um, in, in our courses. So if you go ahead and take a look at the course, the intermediate course, and I think it was the, um, not the objects one, it was the intermediate and the... Um, intermediate V2, because that's where we loop over files, find files, yes. if I remember right. And then the, right. obviously the GUIs course you the covered. The GUIs course, that's, that's what I meant. Yeah, so yeah, if you go ahead and um, if you watch any of those courses, you should have been able to do, or at least have the knowledge to do what right. I just did in that, in that video. Um, if you find yourself, oh, I cannot come up with those ideas. Don't worry, it's just a matter of practicing. 
when you start doing that over and over again, then it comes a time that it just comes well, up naturally. And that's where when you're a hero member, right, then you have weekly access to us. We have three hours of calls where you could be working on something and say, I'm having trouble with this. And we literally help you with your code, right? That's what we're yeah. designed for those calls. Um, I exactly. don't know what we what change we made on Simple Spy. That's a great simple tool for looking at the Win32 controls. Um, it it it's a, a you know an inspection tool for just working with controls that aren't nearly as common as they used to be. But boy, if you if you're automating an older program and it has controls, the yeah. it's so much simpler to work with. Like it's yeah. a great you know. because AutoHotKey has built-in functions that right. connect to them, right? So if you don't have built-in functionality. Right. Like, for example, the SQLite database, there is no built-in library. Or the Windows it, ribbon. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. But to your point, you you brought this up during the Hero call when we were talking about it, is we don't have that yet. Right? Yeah, that's it's what I'm saying. Point. Yeah, We'll, we'll have a, a simpler way, because it's easy to forget even the stuff that we have now. It's all wrapping more complex things that just make it easier. Often, the send and post message, you know, is, is what's going on in the background, but Lexicos or whoever has created a simple interface. Here's all that you need to really know to, to change, make that change. And it handles all the complex stuff in the background. That's why AutoHockey is an amazing language. Yeah. It, the the file um, size is tiny because for the most part, you're connecting to the Windows API to control Windows stuff. You're not, it's not bringing the overhead in itself. Right. All right. This next one we're, we're working because we want to encourage, remind people to join the hero calls and we use telegram we have a private telegram group also on in addition to the three hours of free calls a week where people can ask their questions during the week and um it's easy for people are all over the planet at all different ages um and at different skill levels too and but they get confused i don't blame them right it's it it's easy to try to remember well when are the calls and so we've automated telegram using a bot to do alerts hey the call is going to be you know this time for you or whatever we made a second script tool that'll also do that a local script but we're automating it the bot with telegram to in our notify class which if i try to remember i think it's just notify v2 the automator.com slash notify v2 for displaying notifications oh no sorry that's the other tool <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah telegram it just goes into telegram yeah, yeah. now this discovery tool by the time you're watching this, this will have been released. I'm, I'm planning for it to go out tomorrow, Monday. Uh, phenomenal tool. Um, I've, I know I've talked about it a couple times here, but this tool is just, it's the cat's pajama, man. Like you can drag it onto stuff and it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So we'll, we'll try oh, to- Oh, no, no, no. It, it, is, it is just that there was a control, the shell extension preview. You see below behind that. So can can you close that? It was not it was not the tool's fault. It's this window's fault because that's a special window. It's a very weird window. Oh, but we still should have an exception, right? Right. Very likely, yes. Yeah, we should be programming. No, but look at that. Oh, but your mouse location is oh your DPI settings. Very ah, likely. Okay. Yeah. Let's try it one more time to go on to something else. Hopefully yeah, that should work. Else. Yeah, that, that should work fine. I, I know that that window is a very annoying window. Um, but yeah, we should capture those and and right. At least prevent the error. Right, exactly. Yeah, That's one and second of all, yeah. Well, there is an a, something that we're still working on fixing that DPI. I'm having to hire DPI so everything looks good. But <sighs> this tool, yeah, it's really complicated. Uh, right. but yeah, it helps you understand. This is the discovery. Now we have this as a standalone tool, but when you realize, oh, you know what? Hey, I could use ACC. Let me. Oh, you are in the you're in the discovery tool. You're not on the old automator, uh, the ultimate. Yeah, one. sorry. Yeah. So if you go to the ultimate one, which starts with that one, yeah, the ultimate spy right below below. There yeah. we go. Yeah, this is the one that you were thinking. Right, right, right. Yeah, this is the one. Now the other one's great. But this is one this, is where it starts with the other one. But where's, right. the, yeah. where's the drop? Where's the? Well, it drop? might be the DPI issue again. Right. Where, it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, we conveniently DPI. move it way over here. I'm kidding. This <laughs> and that's, that's the DPI issue we're trying yeah. to solve. But let's say, hey, I can use ACC. I can choose ACC from the list, and it will switch to that the tool. ACC library. Right? Uh, the ACC viewer. Yes, uh, it's really then, cool. Although that's interesting. Yeah, it is up there somewhere. Yeah. It's too, so the, too so far again, away. Yeah. The, 
if you're running the DPI at regular levels, it works great. I promise. Yeah. But yeah, it's really cool. It's just that, um, and 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 trust me, we have been speaking with many people who are really, yeah. very, really smart in many areas, and they too, yeah, finding that uh, issue it, it, hard to explain is the problem. Is if right. we cannot, if we can explain the issue and why it's happening. I guarantee we can solve it, but the problem is we're not really sure what the heck is going on. Because in your friend's computer, this doesn't happen, which is weird. Like, what? <laughs> but yeah. So more with the, this is all Ultimate Spy we worked on, adding that border. Oh, oh, the border. Yeah. Now, is this, where's the one, where, why don't you, why don't I stop sharing mm -hmm. temporarily and, and you pull up that, because I know during the hero call, I think you did an example of using the border, right? So we yes. have a an example, hopefully, of showing showing just a simple way you can add borders to things. And now this class is still in development, but it's got some pretty cool functionality. Yes, uh, we call it the highlight class. It's very simple to use. And... Um, This is the easiest way to use it. You just include the class in your program. You can create any window you want. And then you just use the class with the border and give it the window that you want to highlight. Simple as that. Now, the interesting thing about it is that you can modify some certain things about the border. Now I just created a window with a border. Easy. Now, I could change the size of the border. So if I need it to be a thicker border, I can modify that too. So now it's a little bit thicker and I could make it as, you know, whatever I want, 10 pixels instead. Um, there it goes. And that's the cool thing. I don't know if you noticed, even if another window is above it, like it still highlights what that window was. The window is there, even if you don't see it and it doesn't matter where you move it, the border will highlight that it is there. That's what it's doing, right? So um, that doesn't happen if you minimize the window. If you minimize the window, then the border is not there unless you, you say, so you minimize it. Because minimizing it like that truly kills the GUI, right? Kind of, and, and I'm, I'm, I made code to make sure that if you minimize the window, remove the border because the window is not actually anywhere right now, which is to your point, the window is well, kind of like memory. disappeared. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So at that point, I wanted to do that. And you can change the border color um, by specifying a, a named color that you can see on the AutoHotKey nice. uh, um, uh, help file. The ones that you can use in AutoHotKey, you can use them here, either red, blue, um, green, black, white, whatever you hex want. color or no? You can put hex colors as well. So you can go ahead and use the hexadecimal representation of the color. And yeah, it would just go ahead and give you red in this case. So totally fine if you use either or you can change these two. The last Fs here would be green, I guess. RGB, no, B is blue. RGB. I, and... I've been on calls with Maestrieth where he's like, well, I want a little, and he knows this like in his sleep. It's kind of scary how good he is at knowing this, like exactly what he does and the color it's going to, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. after a while once you understand that this yeah. is red this is green yeah. and this is blue we, we made a good like, video where he was red. teaching me that but i'm like again, yeah. he's so good at predicting exactly and that's the that's the part like once you start mixing the colors like yeah. it's very hard to yeah. predict what color is going to come out of that so if you say 10 here and then an uh, a1 here and then an yeah. f2 Two here, like I, I have no clue what that color is. Yeah, be. You, Some yeah. people might come on, like, yeah, that right. that will be a very nice light gray, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. great. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that is the cool thing. You can use hexadecimals. You can change the size border, and the idea with this class later on, um, if if you not only right now you see that I'm using it in one window, right, but you can um, use it in multiple windows at the same time too. So. If I have another window here, let's say preferences, I'm creating three different GUIs. And as you can see, each of them have their borders. And both. so I can have multiple borders at the same time. I do not need to 
um, have to to you know call each. I don't know how to explain, but it is easy for me to just pass a few windows into this, and for each of them, I just create the border and that's it. So this highlight function uh, will come on very handy, but right now I just have the border way of doing this, but I will have other ways of highlighting a window, kind of like flashing it, uh, kind of like a shade on top of it, or kind of like to obfuscate it a little bit. How about a crosshair that would just mark the window with a crosshair, whatever you want. I will have different ways of highlighting a window. Um, you know, given back with auto hockey, that's a really interesting idea of you could tag, hey, when this window and this control in this window is visible, always obfuscate it. And like you could have that running and it would, you know, just, you just, have just, just yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and, and, and I did, and I showed yesterday on the hero uh, call that here, when I'm passing an object here, what I'm actually getting is the HWND, like the handle right. of the window. And what that means, as it is a window handle, I can pass the handle of a control if I wanted to. Right, and okay, that right. highlights it as well. So I could grab the window handle of that button, and I showed yesterday how you could highlight that as well. So it is a very interesting thing. It doesn't only work on Windows. It could work on controls as well. So if we have this obfuscate class, it would work very cool. Or, or the other way around, just imagine that it shadows everything except for our window. It kind of like highlights that window. That would be another use for this class. And those, all of those, I'm going to be adding them as, as I um, go farther. Right now, it just has the border. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Let me, get, let me once you stop sharing, I'll come back. I'm going to show the next one in the list, which, by the way, I, I have this up just because I was getting ready for it. The next one in the list was the summarize tool. And what, I'm using this. This is a, a plugin. It's a, a paid for plugin service, um, which overall does a really good job. So the, here's a video we did, um, which we haven't released yet, but it's a really good one on, on setting up and using Copilot, which is phenomenal, by the way. Um, you can hit summarize video, and it goes through. Oh, that, sorry. It does both a summary or I want a timestamp summary. It does a great job. Unfortunately, when I go in here and copy, and I come back here and paste, depending on the length of the video, here we see the red border. And when I scroll down, it'll say, hey, it's at 5,851 characters, and you can only have 5,000, right? So what I usually do is come in here, and I, I leave anything that has a timestamp, right? Because that, that this sets up your chapters. But these, I'm like, okay, let's get rid of some stuff. Nope, need more. Nope, nope, need more. And I keep um, going back. I'm not sure if it is just me, but the, the part where the character limit is at down there is being cut. Yeah, okay, now I can yeah, see. Yeah, that's okay. But I mean, you can see the border, right? right so yeah, now yeah. it's under, so I can hit save, right? I'm not going to save because I had it. But we wrote a script that basically looks, it's so we go in here, because also I might on any given thing come up here and write my own little thing of like, hey, we, you know, you can get this script. You know, I, I might add text, which means there's also more outside of what, was provided by my summary tool that I want included. And so, yeah. and then also we said, hey, often, like if it says, um, let's see, auto hotkey, why don't we put in AHK? It'll be shorter, right? So let's look for keywords in our names that it often misplaces and spells. Let's search and replace all of that. Let's remove the periods because that's just an extra character that here isn't needed. Um, let's do some cleanup to shrink it down to get as much of the value of what we got from that summary into here. So yeah, Irfan did that. We did spot one little weird error, um, but it it does a, a complex regular expression doing all that for me. So I'm not manually doing this stuff, right? Which is awesome. Yeah. All right, let me go back to our tool. Um, so that was this one, these three, that's all the same thing. This is the script that we said that like this actually notifies you, you keep it running and you, you'll get our notifications of, hey, the call is going to be in X time. And in in that one, we give a link to the, the hero group where they can get the Zoom link because I'm worried that script will get out and then anyone would have access to it, right? But um, yeah, that's a pretty cool little thing. Um, still, we have different messages that it'll send. Now, this is the one, Isaiah, let me, oh, 
No, no, no. This is sorry. This is the one we've been working on for my for our SBSS project. Yes, that, that is different. Easy yeah. project um, anticipations, and I'll have to work on a way to show it with non-privileged data, so we yeah, can't show yeah. it at all. But we're um, we're you know we're still working on getting data out of Survey Gizmo or Alchemer and putting it into SBSS format. So here's my main script, which I always make. Look, this is the one, Isaiah. And now let me, I didn't realize I have it here, but let me just open it. Um, no, let me, let me, let me, oh, I can open the folder. Yeah, sure. If I remember <laughs> right, I can alt C on a file, right? I have. I don't think we've tested yes, it. Yes, 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 yes. Now I have a copy of it. Okay, yeah. so pop that open. I'm going to stop sharing. This is the one I'd like you to convert to V2. I wrote this because I needed it quickly and I just kept it in V1. That tool, by the way, we used was our, our clip share tool, which we haven't shared yet because right now it's really customized to how we use it. But at some point, we'll make that available. When I can copy text or I can copy a file, hit a, hit a hotkey, it shoves it into a shared spot, and then he can hit a hotkey and basically get a copy of it if it's the text yeah. or the file or whatever. Are you, sure. are you sharing? Oh, there we go. Uh, Sorry. I thought it was. Yeah. Okay. So this one is... Yeah, uh, this is interesting. Uh, I would assume that it's not that hard to convert to V2. Specifically, I would just focus on simple changes like this is the most that we're going to be doing, which is, you know, I don't need that in V2. Uh, this is still correct. It is a continuation section. The only thing is that you have to start with dot equals and because that is the equals, then you have to surround these with quotation marks if you want. That's it. So you have your quotation marks. Everything else works exactly the same as you would expect. So you should get a, a string exactly like this. And in V2, the um, tabs here are smart, which means that when it starts reading the file, it reads oh, it the first it. tab, and then everything else wow. is is trimmed to yeah. that first. Right. So if this is two tabs to the right, then it would only trim one and right. it would still stay trimmed like that. So, but yes, the and in V1, you had to do L trim. I don't know if you remember that in V1, you had to do L trim for this to work. Um, in oh, V2, I don't know if you remember, you could do that, right? On a continuation it wasn't, section. Mine, mine was a working example. No, I understand. What I'm saying is yours was a working example because everything oh, I, I, right, I everything you you didn't you've have the tabs. You've created your own issue, but anyway, yeah, I, I, I get you. No, and, and basically I created it because most um editors do not fold if you don't have yeah. an indentation there. As soon as I add the indentation, then I can fold. But the problem is in V1, that causes an issue because everything will have an indentation that you don't want. Yeah, and then you have to do the L trim. In V2, yeah, you don't have to do that. I would have used the join command if I was taking this approach. Okay. Uh, but in that case, for, for V2, you don't have to worry about it. You put your tabs, but it just manages it for you. That's okay. Now here, I just removed the K in here. That one was a variable that you were not using because it is just the index. In right. V2, you can just specify this, and it will just take whatever you need. You don't have to specify the index variable. Um, and you are creating a menu. So this is the one that is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, I wouldn't say it's tricky per se. It's just that it is different. Um, you have to create a menu item. So let's say, um, what, were you, what did you call my menu? And this, let's switch to the V2 language. Let me remove this right now. I'll go to V2. Yeah, when I switch to the V2 language, it, automatically started complaining about everything, right? <laughs> so single instance here, you don't have to specify the word force any longer. Um, we do have our variable there. Now this is a, um, a function call that is this function, right? And I'm just gonna create a menu variable. And now the menu is an object. So we just get an object that I'm going to call my menu. And now I don't have to specify menu for all of this. Most of the commands work basically the same, but instead of a comma, you would put a dot here. 
because they are now methods. Okay. That's what they are. And of course, you don't have to force. Um, and you see, here is where you were doing the trim. <laughs> but you don't need to do the trim at this point because they're not going to be added anymore. Well, depending on my... Right, uh, however you put it, yeah. yeah. But here, in this case, I think I don't have to. But you see this action here in V2 that was a G label. There it is. Here's your action. Right. In, uh, sorry, that was in V1. But in, so here, the only thing is that you have to define a menu, uh, a function. You put your function in there, and now that will work just fine. And so then you, your clipboard, or did you already change the A clipboard? No, you're going to change it in a second. I have to finish up here. But basically, I will add my menu item, and every time you click it, it will go to the action down here. I will talk about something about this menu function in a second. That's all. But then you have the show here. And then you delete all. Why would you delete all? It hide, After you're done, it, it made it disappear, if I remember right. The menu, the display. You could kill it somehow if you like. That's an interesting thing. So, so you show the menu, and once you click, it deletes all, is what you're saying? It, it, it hides it, yeah. It hides it. Ooh. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, how that worked, I don't know. I mean, it. Uh, let, let me comment. I wrote this years now. ago, and then right. I just, like, hey, yeah. I know I had an example. I need this quick. So I just went and right. got it. Yeah. I will double check on that. Um, sure. I don't think we need it, but we will see. Now, here's what you were referring to clipboard. Clipboard is a variable that in V1 refers to the clipboard, but in V2, you have to put the A now just to be consistent with all the other auto I know. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, and, and they backported that to V1, right? Yeah, so they did. Yeah. Yes. Now, this is something that is totally gone. You do not use the ADs menu item, which was a global variable that told you about which item you pressed. Here is not like that. Whenever you define the function for the menu, in the function, you're going to define three parameters. Um, and let's just go ahead and open the menu here, and you will see what I mean. So the callback for this callback let me look for the add method right and then we have a callback here it is the function when you define it it takes three things and i just usually come here to the to the documentation i copy that and just paste it into my function because you're going to get those three parameters anyways. This has a copy of the menu that triggered this. So whatever menu you have, that's the menu that you will get in case you need to do anything with the menu. I don't care about it right now, so I'm just going to ignore it. The item position or the item name, you can use either or, or you can use both if you have the same position in different item names. For now, you don't have like sub menus, right. so I don't care about it. I will just use the name. So as I'm just going to use that, I will ignore everything else. I will put a comma and I will ignore all the other parameters because I'm just going to use the item name. And you see that you have the ADs menu item. Actually, that would be the ADs menu name. That's it. That's the only change I would do. Um, and of course, this would be a clipboard instead of clipboard. That's it. And I see that you're sending some things that are strings now. And you have a sleep command. You don't need that comma. And there you go. That should be it, except for this part. We will see how this works. So right now, I will have one for each of them. So an item for each of them that when I click on them, it copies the name to the clipboard and pastes it. That's it. So let's just go ahead and run this. This is my menu. I do this, and there you go. It seems to be working fine. Oh, oh, wait. Yeah, the reason for that is because I removed the default settings oh. that has a hotkey for it. Well, hold on. Well, add, use a control T or something. You know, put in a hotkey. All right. It, so, it's supposed to send the text that was selected. It did. Oh, um, well, where did it go? Because I didn't see uh, it. Yeah, you will see. Hold on. Let me just add this. But it did, basically. Um, hold on. 
do I know? I think that should be something in here. And this hotkey should just trigger it. That's it. And I don't need a return in any of this, actually. There we go. We run it. <clears throat> so if I'm here, I just go ahead and do Control-T, select one, and it just puts okay. it. Cool. So it, it is doing it. So basically, you just it's a quick way for you to have these guys and right. just display kind of like a little quick menu that allows you to, hey, there you go. Yeah. I can so it's a really cool thing. The yeah. only thing that you have to change is this uh, uh, this list to whatever you want. It could be any right. list. It's just kind of like something that you can paste right. really quickly. Now, what will, <laughs> again, uh, well, we talked about this. What, what I'd like to be able to do is to, from our SBSS, macro creator thing because that's a list of the macros we've created in sbss is um that's why i want to call them but i was like hey in the tool that we've written to create the adapt the sbss instead of writing it to update this tool mm -hmm. let's export it into a format that prompt assistant can just can take yes yeah and have right. them all like that way we can easily you'd be like hey you want a bunch of snippets in a row that are just this yeah <laughs> you, know, it, it, you can import you know, hit select it and hit this thing to import it, and it pops them all in there. And right. later you can add an icon or hot strings if you want. But the GUI, the, the prompt assistant is perfect. Do you, can you launch it? I assume yeah. yours has the license. Yeah, sure. Just to show that how it, um, it's a really super amazing tool as far as I'm concerned. This is the prompt assistant tool. And um, basically, we have menus of things that send text which is basically what you're doing right now so these when i uh, when i open my menu it just shows me a structured menu with different things i have the mit license the gpl i would have some other hot kv2 snippets of code that are used <laughs> sorry <laughs> very often um some types of comments that i have for everything so it is really cool and what you just described does is basically the same it's just a menu that when you click on it it right. just pastes that text that's exactly what you have the only thing is that prompt assistant is more structured because it allowed you to have you know sub menus and stuff like that well this was a very simple example of hey and, and this icons, is a very quick a way gear, yeah, a to trigger um a lot of other things right now <clears throat> i just realized why you needed this and this is the the cool thing um Does we have always said yeah. yeah because because what happens is in v1 the menus were not independent from one another you called the menu add command yeah. and you gave it a menu name yeah. so if you kept adding as we were yeah. doing it would just append to it so after you showed it you would delete it so gotcha. that the next time you called it, it didn't yeah. append like to it. Like the dot equals. Um, right. But right now, the dot equals is doing that because every time I get a new right. menu object, it deletes the previous one for me. So I don't have to worry about that. But it was a very interesting thing to, to realize. Yeah. The fact that V2 is working with objects is fixing that issue that you had in V1 and right. that you had to do a workaround to fix. Now it's just, yeah, it's part of the code. It automatically did that for me. I didn't have to worry about it. Cool. Okay. All right, let's get back to our list, which I think we were almost done. Let me start sharing again. Um, close that. Yeah, adding the bomb. That one actually, um, I I only changed that because you were exporting. You added the adding the bomb to our process. However, I realized that process we run once, not every time I get a new file. So I so I just changed my name of my file to write it the same file that you had changed the template to. So they yeah. lined up. And this hot key string tool, this is just, it's the precursor to Clipster. Okay. Where in V1, I'm just adding text uh, very quickly and easily. I think actually I actually have, let me open Studio, uh, the V1 version of Studio. And bring it over. And then I can show how the format is for, um, yeah, that's this file. So I, I have my um, references to, oh, ironically there, there's to Clipster. All right, so that's the URL, but I could just type a dot clip. This is what I was trying to trigger earlier, and I couldn't remember the hot string for <laughs> Yeah. 
ironically, um, because I thought I had it in here, but um, I have A is more like a hyperlink. So I think it was the A A tag in HTML, right? So it's the URL. And then P's are paths to files and folders on my computer. So Mm -hmm. it allows me to easily have these both of these things available. Now, Clipster, this is the V1 version, which predates Clipster, because after I created this, I'm like, hey, wait a minute. I have a function where we can take a path of file and push it into the clipboard as a picture. Why don't we add that functionality? And then we said, well, why don't we also make it where if you store HTML in here, it'll actually render the HTML. And when you paste it, you'll have the the uh, pretty hyperlink like in Word, which sometimes and what we're working with, that's what we want. We don't and and it's really unfortunate out of hotkey that we don't we can't use a hot string by default to push in hyperlinked text right we can push in a url but we can't push exactly. in hyperlinked text and that's what and we were and we were talking about that in the in the last hero call somebody was asking what the um we were complicated showing something and we we're showing something else and then the topic came in came about the clipboard the different formats and so on and that's what you're describing this tool made it easy for you to just show show something into the clipboard as hyperlinked text not just simply clear text like yeah, yeah, which if you have stuff that um you know you're constantly giving like a Google address to how to how to get somewhere and you want to have a hyperlink to your actual Google uh, Google Maps but a pretty not an ugly looking URL, right? Stuff like that or your web pages or whatever, right? It's just a nice easy way to be able to do those kind of things. So that's a quick summary of what we've automated this week with AutoHotKey. Um, I know we, we actually dove it since Isaiah was here. I thought let's let's create a few things here or dive into them while we're here. Yeah. But hopefully you enjoyed that. If you uh, like that, like the video, please. really helps us out. <laughs> if you have projects you want help with, we, we do consulting work, right? We, we help people or join the hero group. And that way you can get nudged in the right direction on things you're working on. But uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.